title of today's message is called Facing Your Fears. And uh, Pastor Jeff had asked me, he kind of asked me to preach today, and he asked me to preach on facing our fears. And I think um, he did that on purpose. You kind of see that as I go through my message. It's kind of relevant to me to be talking about facing your fears. And it was also kind of fun for me because um, I meet with this awesome lady, um, Pastor. Some of you know her, Pastor Dolores. And she's kind of been encouraging me and um, adopting me a little bit. She's older. She's been in ministry a long time. And we were sitting and having a cup of coffee. And I told her how I'm a pastor teacher. I do lots of Bible studies and stuff, but um, that's mostly what my focus is. And she's like, you need to preach. And she kept saying, you need to preach. And I just started laughing because like the week before that, Pastor Jeff had asked me to preach. I'm like, yeah, I need to preach. All right, <laughs> here we go. So as you know, I am a more of a teacher preacher, but I'm going to try to be more of a preacher teacher today. So facing your fears, um, Isaiah 43.1 says, fear not, for I am with you. And um, I really like that scripture um, for many, many reasons. Um, one is, is because um, 25 years ago, we were on our way to Buffalo with our 12-year-old son, Nigel, um, who um, had a tumor, and we were going for his biopsy. And um, there was a lot of fear in us. But I remember going in the car in the hospital and just singing, I think Nigel started it, but we were singing, fear not for I am with you, fear not for I am with you, fear not. I'm doing terrible with the singing, but <laughs> fear not for I am with you. The Lord your God is with you. And we just sang that over and over and over again. That was really a popular song back then, but it was in our spirits. We spent the whole time going to Buffalo singing, fear not for I am with you. And we were filled with fear and doubts and wonderings. Um, we didn't know if it was cancer yet, but it was cool how God put so many people in our path in Buffalo as we went for that biopsy. Well, when we were, Nigel was getting his biopsy, we were in the waiting room, and this pastor, um, I forgot if we invited him there or he just showed up. I don't remember exactly, but his name was Mark Hill, and he was a former youth pastor of ours in another church, and he came to us in the waiting room. And he said, you know what? There's life after cancer. We didn't even know if it was cancer yet, but he came to us and he encouraged us and said, there's life after cancer. And he had just finished getting through cancer of his eye. So he'd just been through it. And that I cannot tell you how much that ministered to my heart. That day when we were feel, feeling dread and fear to know, hey, there's life after cancer. And... Um, Everywhere that we went, as we were in Buffalo, there were scriptures everywhere. God just placed us around all the Christians everywhere. When we were at the CT scan, when we were at the check-in desk, the lady there had scriptures all around her desk. It was like God was just showing us the whole time that he was with us. And I know that singing in that car filled us with faith, and it filled us with strength for the days ahead. Another thing I was thinking about is... Um, I was remembering that um, phrase that we hear, fear, um, hold on, I'll get it. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to look that up. And um, you history buffs, it was from FDR in his March 4th, 1933 inaugural address. Um, look that up. Google that address. It's an amazing address. There's really good scriptures in that address and encouragement in that address. But he talked about fear, that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And another thing he said, that fear is a terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. I'm going to say that again. It's a little wordy, but it's really, really good. Fear is terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert, convert retreat when you want to pull back and run away into advance where you want to attack and you want to be bold and you want to go forward. 
And another thing, um, as we get into this message, is did you know that in the Bible, God mentions fear not, says fear not 350 times. 350 times, fear not, fear not, fear not. You think he's trying to tell us something? You think he knows what we might have some struggles with? <laughs> 350 times, that's almost a verse for every day of the year. So I guess the other um, 15 days were okay. <laughs> but the other days we have to remember, fear not. Um, one reason I think, you know, Pastor Jeff gave me this um, topic is because many of you know that I'm going through a transition right now in my life um, because I'm retiring next week after teaching 40 years of piano. I'm, I'm giving that up and just devoting myself to full-time ministry. And um, you think there's a little bit of fear in that? I think so. I'm facing that fear every single day um, for the last couple of months, every single day this week, crying with my students, saying goodbye, saying what's going to happen now because I know, I know that I know that I'm a really good piano teacher and I've done it for many, many times, many, many years and done well. And it's like I'm closing the door on that. I'm like, okay, God, what now? What now? Thank you, Faith, for your word. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's going to help me. Change is an inve inevitable part of our life. It's uncomfortable for many people. But we can trust God to order all the events in our lives according to his purposes. We can lack self-confidence in times of tr um, transition. Get a little bit nervous there. But we need to step out in faith and in active obedience. So stepping out in faith and active obedience. That means putting, putting you know, your um, strength where your, your mouth is and where your trust is. Okay, God, we're going to do this. I'm going to trust you in this. So uh, what is God asking you to do? Step out in faith and go after it. <laughs> it was in my notes, Diane. Don't look back or you might turn into a pillar of salt like Lot's wife. <laughs> we remember our past, for good or for bad, but we can't go back there, and looking back can destroy us. I don't want to turn into a pillar of salt. So we're going to look at five questions today and maybe think about some of the answers. And the five questions are, one, what are you afraid of? Two, why are you afraid of it? Three, what can you do about it? Four, when can you face it? And five, what does God have to say about it? I'll be repeating those, but those are, are the five points we're going to look at today. So number one is what are you afraid of? People are afraid of all sorts of things. Some people have fear and anxiety. Some people are afraid of people. Some people are afraid of the unknown or change. Some people are afraid of death. You know, you can put, put your finger on many, many different things. And, you know, it's, it's really encouraging because there's a scripture for anything that you can come up with. If you have anxiety, Psalm 94, 19 says, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. When anxiety was great within me, God gave me joy. Don't you want to trade your anxiety for joy? And he's there with you in the midst of it. If you're afraid of people, these two verses weren't up there. If you're looking for them up there, they weren't up there. Um, Psalm 27, 1 through 3 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. 
that's a great one. If you're afraid of people, if you're afraid of the enemy, if you're afraid of the war that's going on around you, look up that scripture, Psalm 27. So you have to be honest about it. If you're going to overcome fear, you have to identify it. So this point is, what are you afraid of? If you're going to overcome it, you have to identify it. You have to admit it's there. You have to say, I'm afraid of that. But I love um, Psalm 34, 4, because it says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. He delivered me from a few of my fears. He delivered me from some of my fears. He delivered me from all my fears. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> That's pretty good news. Fear of the unknown and of change. Every life includes constant contact with change. Can't avoid it. Some are voluntary and some are forced upon us by circumstances. Some changes bring joy, like the birth of a baby. That's a change. That's a huge change, right, Melissa? But it brings a lot of joy. <laughs> Katie, you're going to have lots of joy in a few days. <laughs> That's a good change, but it's still a change. Others bring sorrow and confusion, like the loss of a job or, or death of a, a spouse or a friend. Whatever the case, God's in the midst of them. And God never changes. So we have constant change in our life, but God never changes. He's the one constant in our life. That's why we needn't fear. Change can be a gift from God to heighten, deepen, and widen your personal relationship with God. Stay in the word now more than ever. Don't say, I don't have time. I don't have time to get in the word that much. I don't have time to find a scripture about that. You can't afford not to have time. You have to have time. Those hardest times of your life, that's the time you need, need to get time with the Lord into the scriptures more than ever. And, and I think um, as we look at different fears, I think one of the greatest fears that many of us have is the fear of death because it's such an unknown. It's a fear of the unknown, but it's a fear of death. And actually, I think a lot of people are afraid to die, but also people are afraid of the process of death. But we have to remember that's a natural price um, part of uh, life. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Death is a natural part of life. God tells us not to be afraid of it. Psalm 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. So there's a lot of really good things in that. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's just a shadow, I shall not fear because God is with me. I'm not alone. He's right there with me, taking me through that process, helping me face that thing that I'm most afraid of. And it's pretty natural. It's, it's so much like a baby um, in the womb. A baby passes from the womb into life. And the baby's probably saying, I'm safe and comfortable here. I don't want to go out there. <laughs> I don't want to do that. What are you ma making me go through? This doesn't feel too good. I have to squeeze through what? <laughs> oh, or in, in some cases. <laughs> Okay, didn't know that was there. <laughs> but, you know, that's the process of life, right? And the process from going from, from this life to eternal life is the same. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through there. I'm safe and comfortable here. I don't want to be there. So we kind of fear that process, and we fear what's going to happen on the other side. But I'll tell you, those babies don't want to go back in the womb once they come out. I'm glad they don't try. <laughs> um, a scripture I found as I was thinking about death, 
that I thought was really interesting was Matthew 27, 50 through 53. It said, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He was experiencing death for us. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. This is one of those verses, I don't even remember reading this verse before. You ever find those? It's like, whoa, I never saw that before. God, Jesus had died on the cross. He was going to be risen again in three days. But when he, died again, when he died on the cross, the graves were open and the saints came up and started walking around. They were resurrected before Jesus had even finished the resurrection, you know, power that he was going to be raised up. I just thought that was, that kind of blew my mind. It's like, whoa, you know, God has so many things in the Bible to help us not to be afraid of death. As long as we're Christians, and if we're not Christians, that's another story, that's another message. But if we're Christians, we don't have to be afraid because we're going to rise again, just like these people um, in Matthew 27, just like Jesus did after he died on the cross. So what are you afraid of? That's number one. Number two, why are you afraid of it? It helps to get to the root of the fear. Where and when did that fear start? Think about that, whatever you're facing. Where did that start? Um, Valerie, I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> Valerie does not like roller coasters. Our family loves roller coasters. Valerie does not. She hates them. We, <laughs> we love them. She hates them. But I was thinking about that. I'm like, in this family of roller coaster enthusiasts, why does my daughter hate roller coasters? What was the source of that fear? And I thought of two things. One is when she was three years old, <laughs> she tried climbing up a slide not going down the slide, not going up the, the stairs and down the slide. She tried climbing up the slide part of the slide. And she fell off and broke her arm. <laughs> so that's one of her first memories, actually. And I'm thinking, no wonder she doesn't like to go up and down because she fell off when she was three. She fell off of going down, going up. You know, I don't know if that was the source, but I like to think about things like that. But another really big thing that happened to her is when she was seven, um, her godparents and, and us went to Disneyland, and they took her on Space Mountain. She did not, she'd never gone on a roller coaster. She did not really want to go on a roller coaster. And, as, and those of you know, that's a roller coaster in the dark. Besides, she was not ready for that. And she went on that, was scared to death, and ever since then, she's really never, ever wanted to ride a roller coaster again. Uh, so what does that tell us? <laughs> it tells us you need to know what you're ready for. God told, me when, God told me when I was ready to face my fear of roller coasters, he hasn't told Valerie that yet. <laughs> but God deals with us each individually. He took away my fear one roller coaster at a time. I had to de develop my faith as I let God help remove that fear. But believe me, I asked a lot of questions. I asked, okay, how high is that roller coaster? How fast does it go? Okay, I want to see the whole thing. You know, don't we do that to God when, we, when we're facing fears? Like, okay, how high, high do I have to go? How long do I have to do this? Where am I going at the end? How can I get through that? We want to we wanna know all the answers when we're trying to face our fears, when we're tr facing change and anxiety and the unknown. And you know what? It's okay to ask questions. It is. It's okay to ask God. Ask him what to expect. He might not answer every question right when you want him to, but he'll answer you. He'll tell you what to expect. Um... 
as we look at anxiety. Fear is described in scripture as bondage, torment, and a snare. And you know what? Often the phrase, be not dismayed, is connected to the phrase, fear not. Fear not, be not dismayed. It's fear not. Um, anxiety literally means, um, oh, excuse me. In, in the word, when it says be not dismayed, it means don't be torn apart and don't be panicked. That's what we do when we're afraid. We get torn apart, we get panicked. As Christians, we're led by the Spirit of God, and we did not receive the spirit of bondage. Romans 8, 14 through 15 says, For as many as led are, are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So these are people that are led by the Spirit of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of by adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba means daddy. We cry out to our daddy. And he says, don't fear. I'm with you. Be not dismayed. I am with you. First John 4, 18 says, there's no fear in love, but for perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has, been, has not been made perfect in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear involves torment. God loves us enough not to be tormented. We know who wants us to be tormented, don't we? It's not God. <laughs> Somebody else is trying to torment us. So number one was, what are you afraid of? Number two, why are you afraid of it? Number three is, what can you do about it? God doesn't want us to live in fear. Are you getting that? John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. I have a few other scriptures here. I love all of these. Joshua 1, 9, one of Pastor Jeff's favorites. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. There it is again. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Doesn't matter what you're going through. He's with you wherever you go. Isaiah 41, verses 10 and 13. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Verse 13, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. We're not in this alone. That's the good news. We're not in this alone. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong. Those are all really good scriptures. How do you get stronger? Ask Pastor Roger. <laughs> he's not here, he's upstairs with the teens. But ask Pastor Roger how to get stronger. You exercise, you work out, you develop your muscles, you stretch them. Every time you go a little farther, you get a little stronger. You, wait, you start with five pound weights, then you go to 10 pound weights, then you go to 20 pound weights, and then you go to 50 pound weights, and then you collapse. But, <laughs> but you keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and your muscles get stronger and stronger and stronger. You have to keep, the other thing is you have to keep at it. I think, again, Pastor Roger would tell you, if you stop that, if you stop that weightlifting, if you stop that exercising, you go back. You start to go backwards, and you have to start all over again or build it up again. So when we're facing our fears and we're developing our faith and we're going F against something, we have to keep at it. We can't let down our guard. Like it said in um, 1 Corinthians 16, be on your guard, stand firm in your faith, um, you can't let down your guard or you're going to have a flabby faith. 
If you stop exercising, your muscles are going to get flabby again. So be on your guard, stand firm in your faith. Okay, number four is when can you face it? When can you face your fear? Um, I've been reading and studying uh, a book by Christine Kane, and she's one of my favorite authors right now. And she wrote about that in her book that I'm reading, and she said, when you allow fear to dictate how you spend your days, you allow life to pass you by. When you allow fear to dictate how you spend your days, you allow life to pass you by. And then she went on and said, fear will always try to stop you, trip you up, and put your life on hold. So are you willing to give God your fears? Let him help you one fear at a time. Um, what are you willing to lay down today? What, are you, what fear are you willing to lay down today? You um, can start with the small fears, or you can start with the bigger fears. Um, God will help you and show you when you're ready, but stop making excuses. Remember Psalm 34.4 that said, He delivered me from all of my fear. So stop making excuses. Say, God, um, okay, I'll take care of, I'll face this fear right now. And I'll build up to the other ones a little later. But I'll try to do this one right now. So number one was, what are you afraid of? Number two, why are you afraid of it? Three was when can you, what can you do about it? And four is when can you face it? God is ready to deliver you from them all. But you may not be ready to give them up to him. Um, sorry, I'm kind of backtracking a little, but you could start with something small like your fear of spiders. You could, you could deal with that, you know. Say, I'll deal with that one first. And then give, deal with your bigger one like death or anxiety or something like that. Deal with that later. But start somewhere. You'll be surprised at how courageous you are. You're stronger than you think. You have a great big God. Sometimes we have no choice. Things happen that we have no choice about. Cancer comes. We may not have a, a choice about that. Death comes to somebody, we may not have a choice to that. We get fired, we may not have a choice about that. But all we can do in that situation is to wait, hope, and pray that we'll be safe. You still God know, know that God is with you, and he walks through you in that um, instance. Um, <clears throat> Michelle and I were on a trip once. We went to see Joyce Meyer in St. Louis, and we were coming back um, on the plane from Atlanta, and we got on the plane, and I don't know, we just had a sense that we needed to be praying. Did God ever do that for you? Just like, okay, something's not exactly right here. You need to be praying. And we were praying and, and um, trying to enjoy the ride. We also noticed uh, the man across the aisle was reading the Bible, and he had it open to Psalms. It was a small enough plane we could see that. And we're like, oh, that's really cool. So we're really thinking we need to pray, and this guy's reading Psalms. And um, all of a sudden, like, my ears started hurting really badly, like one of the worst pain that I've had. In my ears, they were just, like, going crazy. And my water bottle started to shrivel up and collapse upon itself. And, you know, I'm, I wasn't sure about what was going on, but pretty soon the captain came up upon the thing, and he goes, okay, we, we're not being able to pressurize our cabin. So if it's not pressurized, then your ears are going to hurt. Your water bottles are going to collapse. The babies were crying because they were hurting their ears. He goes, so we have a problem. We have to turn around and go back to Atlanta. <laughs> so Michelle and I are praying some more. There's nothing you can do in that situation, right? You can't say, okay, I don't like this plane. I'm going to jump out of it and find another one. You got to just kind of stay on it and wait and hope and pray that you'll be safe and let God give you that strength in that fearful place. And we went back to Atlanta and found out, I don't know how this happens, but somebody in Atlanta had not closed the luggage door. 
and we were flying with that open, and so it was calling to us not to be able to have pressure in the cabin. So they fixed it. We took off. We got home. Ooh, we prayed all the way home. <laughs> we made it safely. So God sometimes just has to walk you through it. There's nothing you can do but walk through it, but know that he's with you. So number five, finally, and most importantly, is what does God have to say about it? Place scriptures all around you to remind you. Figure out what you want to face. Figure out what fear you want to give to him. Look for scriptures. Let God show you scriptures and put them everywhere that you can to remind you. Memorize it. Dwell on it. Search for it. Sometimes it, you have to search for that scripture that's going to help you. Um, exercise it. Write it down in a journal. Whatever you have to do, stay on top of any fears that come at you. And ask him to show you what he has to say about it. And God will be specific. As I decided to retire, God gave me a couple scriptures to help me through. And that was really encouraging. One was already on the wall in my office, and it's Psalm 18.2. It says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust. So over the next few months, I know I'm going to be going back to that. He's my strength. He's my deliverer. I trust in him. I am not afraid. And then he gave me another one. It was um, Isaiah 55, 12, which says, You shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. And I grabbed onto that one. Remember, you have to search for it sometimes. God gave me that one. I grabbed onto that one. I'll go out in joy, and I'll be led forth in peace. So I'm letting go of something in my past with joy and going forward into my future, which is somewhat unknown, with peace. That's a really good thing to know. And then I decided to look it up in the Message Bible, and I really liked what it said. So I wrote it down, and I posted it in my office, and I put it here for you to, to read. This is what it says. It says, you shall go out with joy. You'll be led into a whole and complete life. Isn't that good news when you're facing something like transition? The mountains and the hills will lead the parade, bursting with song. All the trees of the forest will join the procession, exuberant and applause with applause. No more thistles, but giant sequoias. No more thorn bush bushes, but stately pines. Monuments to me, to God, living and lasting evidence of God. Thistles and thorn brush brushes are try will try to, to snare you. They'll try to hurt you, they'll try to hold you back. And you, instead of that, you become like a giant sequoia, like a stately pine. That means you're growing, you're getting taller, you're getting stronger, and you're um, going to be around for a long time. That's how I take it. <laughs> um, so I typed that up, and it's hanging in my office as a reminder as I face one of my fears. So when facing your fears, you can't afford not to be in the Word. How can God lead you and comfort you if you're not in the Word? Why else would he put fear not in the Bible over 350 times? There's something there we need to know. As we fix our eyes on him, it helps us to grow stronger. We're developing our faith muscles. We're working, working out. When we keep our eyes on him, he takes us out of the constraints that otherwise bind us in fear. We're no longer restricted and trapped in bondage. We are free. As I faced my fear and went down that roller coaster hill, raising my arms, no less. So eventually I rode roller coasters, but then I got brave enough to do this. Stupid family that we are. <laughs> and going down going down the hill with my arms raised. And when I did that, for the first time, I literally yelled out, I'm free. I'm free. I faced a fear that used to overwhelm me. I was so afraid of coasters. I was able to let go 
and go down that hill, and I was free, and I was never afraid to ride coasters again, and I actually really enjoy them. So that's a good thing. So the five points just to review are what are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of it? What can you do about it? When can you face it? And what does God have to say about it? So as, um, as 